creations. Okay, um, edge creations is something that you can create both on the iPad and on the computer. And uh, one of the powerful things about it is is that kids can then see you what you talk about in class. So you don't really have to do anything uh, new from your lessons. It will record your lessons as you talk and you, your presentations. And I'm going to show you three different ways to use it. One, if you've already got a PowerPoint created and you want to just use that in class and record what you're saying so that um, whether or not you're giving a presentation to a class or whether or not you're giving a pre presentation to Lions or something, you could have that and record it and then put it up on, on the site and it will give you a code so that kids or anybody else can go see it. Um, and then I'm also going to show you how to create it on the iPad and also on the uh, what other people have done and how you can look at other people's creations because teachers are out there already creating these already and they've created some really nice stuff. And so uh, uh, sometimes it's silly to recreate the same thing that other people have already created unless you want your little special brand on it. Uh, but it's a good way also if someone else has created to, to have another way of ex explaining something that you've been talking about. Uh, only use it maybe with a little different twist, different words, different diagrams, and helps kids see it another uh, couple of different ways. So especially in your SPED area, it might be good for your paras that if they're trying to learn something and they don't really know what the teacher's talking about, it could help them uh, show the kid a different way of seeing it and see that explanation. Um, so once you've, cre you've created your account, there's a you know sign up free and you can do some different things with it. They do have already some features here uh, that you can look at already and some of it you know you can do it by featured ones but you know if we're looking at social studies let's say or math or whatever you might want to do you can see that they have already a, a lot of information there that might be so um, individual rights the different feudal things Manhattan Island all the different things that might be going on uh, and then there's more lessons if you click down here on the bottom. But for kids to see them, or if you want someone to see what they're doing on Lewis Clark, you simply click on Lewis and Clark, and that information's coming up. You can see that it's a five-minute video. For Lewis and Clark lead from St. Louis. And to begin see whether or not the speaker's the saying the right things or not. States has just purchased and that can be an instruction part of they make the way along the Missouri piece. But what, and this is all teacher directed, teacher doing it. But one of the real powers of edu creations, since your kids are going to have this tool on their iPads, is to have the kids create something. So you could have, say, a math teacher could put up a math problem, and instead of doing 20 sheets on a worksheet, you can say, here's three different problems. Work out the problems and tell me what you're thinking as you go through. So you can hear what the kid's thinking. And, and see what they're doing on the paper. And I'll show you how that works. And it works pretty easy. And they can email it to you or, or however you want to connect it to it. So let's get started. This is EduCreations. And um, if we wanted to create a new lesson, you just simply click on the word. And there should be a, um, a way to, say, create a new lesson right here on a big button. Are you on this page at all, or where were you? Let's go back to where you were on the first part. On the iPad, it's going to look a little different. On the iPad, it's going to look a little different. Oh, shoot, wrong way. Let's go. Um, iPad. It'll look as soon as you open it up. It'll ask you to, if you don't have your information in there with your. Um, Uh, your code, your name, it will ask you to to do that. And why is this not? Switch to staff. And this should be on staff. Oh, I didn't turn on reflection. That would be helpful. So, It looks like this little diagram with the right triangle, ABC, on it. 
that's Edu Creations. So when you push that, you should start up with your lessons in here that you've either created or it'll be blank. It might go to the featured ones, which is on the bottom. There's it says my um, my lessons and featured lessons. Again, here's where you can do some more searching on your iPad. So kids can do this on their own at home. Same type of deal. Subject areas on the top left where they click on that and say, okay, what am I studying or what do I want to learn about? And um, it'll give you all the, some of the different things that you have. And you, you can see some of the people spend a lot of time getting proper graphics in there and there's music and all sorts of things in there, gas laws and um, great for coaches to do coach plays. I know uh, Jolene Dredge's daughter, uh, when she was trying to teach, she was, she was playing, I don't know, fourth, fifth grade basketball. They had out of bounds plays and they just learned them. So she drew them up for her other teammates so they could see what play one is or whatever the name is. And she'd draw on, here's where you go here, here's where you break. And this is, and kids could see those and, and she shared those out and they really enjoyed that type of stuff. So coaches could do that too with plays that they're putting in new plays for the week or whatever they wanted to do. Uh, and of course, the education part of it's in here too. So that's a, a part of it. So if I go to my lessons and I go on the top and say new lessons, right up here on the top, left. It'll come up with this blank screen. And the blank screen is four colors, but there's a little arrow under the one color. So if you don't like those four colors, if you push the arrow, you can see that there are some different colors that you can choose from if you like yellow or orange or something like that. Those will tell you what you do when you write on here. So here's black, here's red, and to undo it, the arrow to the left undo, undoes that. So you can undo what you've, you've done on that type of stuff. <coughs> the next icon is a hand. That will allow you to move things around. So if you put text down, you can move it around. So I'll it hit the T for text. So it says tap anywhere for text. So now I can tap and add um, supply. Hit my keyboard and demand. And then on the bottom it shows you can change the color of it. You can change the size of it. You can make it bigger. You can make it smaller. Um, and then on the bottom it says done. So we hit done. The little hand lights up. And now you can move it around wherever you want to move that around. So as you create your lesson, your pages, what you're doing here is you're creating a page to, to later show what you want to do. Okay. A um, little graphic here is where you can import different things. Uh, you can import from your camera. If you want to take a picture of a lab situation, um, uh, you can take photos that you've already have on your on your computer. You can put things in Dropbox and bring them in. Uh, you can go to the web. So if I wanted to go to the web and say, what's an image I might want? I might want a test tube. Hit test tube, hit return. It's going to give me a lot of pictures of just different kinds of test tubes that I can then use and put into my graphics. So I could say, here's the one that I want. Click on that. It's going to download that image. I can resize it if I want and move it around wherever I want to put it. That's not really a supply and demand situation, but just for an example. Um, the eraser will erase some of the things that you write. So if I wrote something here in green and I wanted to erase it, I can click the eraser and erase it if I just don't do it quite right rather than hitting undo if I just want to do part of it. And then the next, um, it also has a whole, if you see it has a down little arrow, you can hear it clear the whole page or clear the ink that you've written on. So you have that choice of what you want to do. I was clearing the ink that I was erasing on. And then the record button on the right is the key to, to start your recording and 
you don't have anything saved until you record what you're talking about. So even if you want to just save this one picture, you can record for one second and then you can you can save uh, and put your stuff up. If we go to the bottom, you can see that there are different kinds of pages down here by the arrow. You can click on that. You can see that instead of just a white paper, if I want to have graph paper for my supply and demand, I might do that, have a graph paper in there. Um, okay, Rick. Yeah. No, no, no. It, when you hit record, that's it. you have to hit record if you want to save your presentation. The whole presentation. Yeah. That's but how. If you, if you hit record, <coughs> then you can't add to that presentation. Yes, you can. Okay. Yeah. You can add to it. It's a new feature. You okay. couldn't. You couldn't do it about a month ago. Okay. Um, the bottom right arrow is where you go to the next page. So if on the second page then I want to do something else and change the kind of paper, I can change my paper to line paper and I can write something there if I want to. Uh, I can bring in a graphic here on page three or four and the left arrow on the bottom goes back. You can see where it says three or four, four or four. So you can see your pages that, as, as you add different things to your um, Lesson. I'm not sure what I want to add. So here we're talking about some great crescent burgers that I saved. So really good information. Can you buy other backgrounds? Like if I'm a music teacher, I want to. Yes, I think you can buy. Um, you can buy other things. Or what some people do is just. Um, Take a picture of a blank staff, and then once you have it in there, you can just reuse it, put it in there, save your pictures in there. I don't, I'm trying to remember if this has a purchase paper. I, I don't remember ever seeing a purchase paper option. So as you go through and build your presentation, um, you can take a picture. And then say on the bottom, say use. So now that picture is in on my page. So I got four pages, and, I, and my presentation's ready to go. So all I have to do is hit record now on my item up here. And I can say, okay, today we're going to learn about supply and demand. And this is the uh, wonderful graph that we're going to use. We're going to make a, a graph like this. And this will be the cost. And this will be the number of items. And um, this will be supply. This will be demand. And if we see that this is the price point right now where we have a certain price and the demand is giving us a certain amount, uh, if we increase supply, which is the red line, if we increase supply and go this way, what's that do to our numbers? So we will say, ask the questions, and of course they're going to say, let's graph it out. It's going to reduce the price and increase the numbers. So if you want to increase the supply, your price will probably go down if demand stays the same. So we talk about how do you increase demand? Well, advertising and things like that. So what is if you increased your demand and kept the supply at the same amount, so now we increase the supply, and now we have the blue line up here, and under our new amount dropping down, we can see that we can, and the supply will increase just because the price has increased the amount. And you can talk about that. Show the different graphs as you go there on different amounts, slide to page two, and here, write your story of what you want to do on this, and you can write da 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 whatever you want to write. Go to page three, and talk about your chicken, and page four, and then you can draw a little devil horns on Dave. And do whatever you want. Then you hit pause, and uh, you can stop for a while, ask questions, and if you want to restart back up again, you hit record again. So you can stop and pause as you're talking.
doing your presentation. Um, then when you're all done with it, you hit done. We want to save lesson. Choose your title. Wahoo Supply Demand. You can add a description if you want to. Hit next. Then it gives you a choice. If you've set up that you were a teacher, you'll have my students, my school on the bottom. And if you didn't set up your account that way, you'll only have private or public. But either way, I always usually choose private. Uh, if you have a great lessons and you want people to share and see your lesson out there, you can you can choose public. But I will just choose private right now. Subject area I'll say is social studies, and subject is economics. Hit save. Then saves that lesson, puts it in your your supply and and then automatically uploads it to your education site so that people on your computer or whatever they do can get to it. So the question is, how do they get to it? On the far right, there's a trash can, and the next icon over is the typical one where you share out with. So if I click on my button there, it says you have some different options. Uh, you can set up a Facebook account. You can set up a Twitter account if you want to. You can set up an email if you have your email or a link. So if you know that you have a web page like Weebly, like you have, and you want to have kids see this site, and you just want to put it on a, on a web page, all you have to do is copy that link right there. Click on that. It says Copy Lesson Link, and it will then put it in your memory, and you can paste it wherever you'd like to have it. If you, want to, if you can't do it off of your iPad, depends on which program you have, you can always email it to yourself. So you can hit the email one. And you can say, um, R. William, and then click here to view my lesson. Here's about supply and demand. You can change it. So you could have your, your class already set up. Or if you want to send it just to kids that are not there that day, or however you want to do it, uh, send it to not only your class, but the SPED teachers, but you know, and everybody else that you might want to, to show. You can then hit that in send, and it will then go to them. They'll be able to get that, click on it, and access that wonderful supply and demand lesson that you just created. We also have an Edmodo community now. So it looks like it'll communicate. we're going to be using Edmodo to communicate with that students. So. Yeah, could be. I haven't played with that part. Good. They have an Edmodo. If you go to the settings, there's a link there for joining our Edmodo community. Oh, I'm gonna check that out too. So that's how you can create, and that's how kids could create. Simply, you could have that basic lesson up there, or have them say, "Here's three questions," and then they can tell you what they do to explain that math, science, or whatever it might be, and then they can email that lesson back to you and you can see whether or not your kids are getting it or not. Thoughts? Might be useful? I just post it every lecture. I'm a math teacher. Math teacher, I mean... As I'm, as I'm giving it to the class, post it, and yeah. it's going to be there for those who need to rewind. It'll be there for those who weren't in class that day. It'll be there for the parents. It'll be there for the parents. It's there for them to review for a test later on. It's just, it's there. And you're... Kids the following year can have access to it, and if they, you know, if you change a few things, that's fine. You literally are building your own You're, you, That's right, and it's free. This is a no, this is a no brainer for any subject. So that's that's uh, so useful as you teacher, build it from the no more study halls with a substitute teacher. Got the lecture tape. We don't need to waste that time. You know, if you know you're going to be gone as a teacher. And especially if you have something you want the kids to really know, you could do this at home, do your 45-minute lesson at home, save it, and then tell your sub-teacher, here's your lesson. Have the kids either see it on a big screen, share it, or watch it individually if they have headphones or something like that. And they can rewind it as much as they want. Because when they get in here and look at it, you know, you can hit rewind. It shows up here, and you can hit pause. 
and you can go forward and play it. You can go backwards and play that. So it doesn't make any difference where you are. It will give you those options of, of seeing things as you go. So it's really kind of a... Yes. Now, the other question is, can you hook up, can we hook up to our projectors from our iPads? Yeah, right so now, that, right now we have the program that he's using. Um, I have an Apple TV sitting on my on my desk right now. I have an adapter in the mail. Steve and I are going to do a little comparison um, to see if the Apple TV is that much better in the reflection. Air Maybe. Server is another one that's or AirPlay, or server AirPlay, I can't remember which one. It's a little bit cheaper than Reflection. Reflection is about, um, well, that's, you buy them in prices five. of five, five, you can get them for 10 bucks a piece. Yeah. yeah, but if you buy more than 20, you get it even less, like $8 at one. I mean, our whole elementary already has Reflection. Probably a third of our staff here already has Reflection on their computers. Okay, but, but if it's on their Walk onto the iPad, doing a lesson. Right okay. now, he, he can get up. He's using reflection right reflection now. Reflection right now. So oh, the are, computer is. He's showing, he's showing his iPad. The it computer is, is connected. Yeah. So the way I get out of it is built into every iPad 2 and above is the ability to go over here and see that little arrow with a up and it's blue. If I click on that, it says right now Clayton has his. Uh, connected through AirPlay. I can, if I want to go back to my computer, I say iPad back here, and now my computer's being projected. To have this projected, I click on my um, my computer name, and ideally you want to have it so you have your own password, so kids don't jump on it. Because you could have, I don't know if I have, um, could I take over right now? That's that's the question I was going to ask. That's the issue you, you have. When Depends if I have my. I can't remember if I have my uh, password in there or not. I think I might have turned it off just to uh, show somebody something. Correct me if I'm wrong, but from what I'm reading, that the main advantage to uh, ITV, or what, what is it? Apple TV. Okay. Over reflection is that you can reflect um, multiple iPads simultaneously. I think you Apple can TV. do that. I think you can do that on Apple TV too. Apple, you can't do it on reflection though, can you? Yeah, I'm doing it right here. Oh, there you go. I got my computer and my phone on here at the same time. So I can. So you could have somebody else have their iPad up, and you have multiple iPads up, and have them demo whatever they're doing, and right from the class. So is there a reason you'd spend $99 for an Apple TV over just using reflection? At home, I have that option so I can go into Netflix and Hulu and some of those things. There's no reason to buy it when you have it for just classroom use. No reason okay, to buy so it. In my you, opinion. In your opinion. Performance is not better? I haven't seen it. I, sp I, know I haven't really tested a lot with pure um, video streaming, but... Depends on how many people are on your wireless. If your wireless is poor, either both the Apple TV and the reflection are based on how much speed your wireless has. They both go through the same wireless connection. You don't hardwire. That was your, Vicky's point. He doesn't, she doesn't think you're going to see any better performance with Apple TV. I don't think so either. Steve thinks so. We're going to see. <laughs> I think it has to do more with your wireless. If you've got if you've got 80 teachers all going on a small hub. Yeah, it's going to push it. So if she beefs up your wireless and you've got lots of uh, access, points. access points, you'll be fine. She's beefing that up, so we'll be able to get better. So show me then, with reflection, how can you, how does a kid get in to, to mirror? Okay. Okay, that, that was my question. How does a teacher have their... There's projected on the left and the student projected on the right. When you double click on the home button, 
Do you have an iPhone? You don't. No, I'll okay. watch it. If double click on that, it brings up the base unit. Okay. On the phone, you have to swipe twice, and then you get the little icon with the arrow. You click on that, and it brings up all those people that have AirPlay active on your computer. Yep. And then you click on mirroring on, and it will turn it on. Okay, so I'm in the middle of class. Right. And Billy's being a little in the back row, and he wants to mirror in on top of what I'm doing. Okay. How do I, how do, I how do you stop that? Exactly. Then you come into reflection. Let me get out of these. You're not recording all this. I am recording all this because... That's what Camtasia does. <laughs> but that's okay. So if I go to Reflection, or it's called Reflector now, and I go to Preferences, under Preferences there's a password. So he couldn't get in on mine because he probably doesn't know my password. But I can. each teacher can set their password for a different number or different name or whatever it might be. And if they want to have kids in then, they can either remove the password or simply put the password up on that periods thing. Today's password for class three is ABF275, you know, whatever it might be. Passwords are going to be important. Yes. Because, let's say I leave your class, let's say I'm a real jokester. Yes. Three or four periods down the road, I want to mirror in on your computer right in the middle of your lecture. Right. That's why this program is really good that it has a password. You couldn't do it without it. Really, you couldn't. And I, I, I'm just trying to think through the pros and cons of turning off my password to let kids in versus having a password and telling the kids what the password is and changing it each day. Well, it depends how many times you're going to have the kids show up on your computer. Depends on what you're doing. I mean, if, if, if it, this is an interactive whiteboard, which in effect it can be, Right, rather expensive one, but still, you'd want them up there as often as they can be every day. Mm -hmm. Somebody could be demonstrating something. Yeah, you could. And passwords are easy to create. It just depends on. Um, <laughs> yeah, it depends on can you remember it. Well, all you have to do is remember. All you do is type it in here, and today it's two 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 two, and hit done. And now these, if I want to connect here. I have to, on my iPad, if I want to connect to this, come on, it's going to say, what's your password? So for this period, it's 2222. Hit OK, and now I can come on. Next period, it might be 2422. But you just type it in right there, and you put it up on the board. So unless someone walks by and looks into your classroom. It, 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 that right there would be a teacher management thought process. Yeah. So put it on a sideboard so people walking by can't see it if you want them, if your lesson is for them to go through your computer. And it can't be 1111 for period one and 2222. Two, 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 oh, no. Not every two, day, too. Because the next day somebody's going to figure that one out. Right. So it really does have to be something think yourself through. And you can do more than four. I just did four letters, four numbers. It's, it's whatever you want to choose and, you know, however mnemonic you want to have, whatever mnemonic you want to have. But yes, that's, if, if you don't change it, someone from the period that was in the, the period before could come in there and, and write something that's not appropriate. That happened in the uh, And it was an accident. Somehow somebody left password protection off. Somebody clear across campus mirrored in. Oh yeah, it just have to be on the same wireless. Exactly. You don't have to even be. And it was a seventh grader mirroring into a high school classroom. So it wasn't even appropriate. I mean, it, it was out of the blue. Yeah, and that's just, you just go to reflector preferences. And you can name your own uh, this is why I just falls into to that name, but you can name it whatever you want. Where's the mirror? How do you turn mirroring on your iPhone? On your iPhone? 
Same thing, you just double click on it, slide it twice on the bottom. I might get an alarm. You don't have it. Huh? Are you on what wireless are you on? No. Oh, you know what? I don't have my wireless on. Okay. I have my 3G on. Okay. That won't work. That's probably one. Something I saw was kind of a screen settings of numbers there. Is that something that's important for us to know? I'm sorry? Screen, I saw screen setting numbers on your screen. Your um, screen setting numbers on my phone? Oh, on here, on the preferences? Yes. Uh, it just defaults. To, it defaults there? Yeah, you can either, if you have, if you know you're going to be doing something special, like you have an iPhone 5 and you want to, it's, it's a lot of times narrower and taller, so it'll just give you a better resolution. But I always leave it on any device, and it blows it up to the full screen on that. And then... Uh, I also launch in full screen so that it it blackens everything else behind it. If I uncheck that on full screen, and and now I went to here, it leaves you can see stuff behind it. So you have to go to the top and go full screen. Yeah. So I don't like that. So I just make sure that I go to under preferences, launch full screen. And you can have the background color, any color you want. I have it just black. Um, so those are just real simple options for you. So how many devices can you show simultaneously? I think I've had four on here at one time. They just they just keep getting smaller and smaller. Said you've worked with Apple TV, so the mirroring the password process, that whole thing, everything we just talked about is basically the same whether you're using reflection or Apple TV. You know, I've never, I have Apple TV at home, so I never have a password on it. I've never tried to, I, you can set a password on it. I assume that's what Springfield had, was Apple TV with yeah. passwords. It's a little bit harder. I think it's easier here to set the password because you just go through drop down preferences. On the i or Apple TV, you have to go through menu. You know, do you use your clicker to go through the the part to get it to move. So it's a little bit, a lot more clicks to get to the change of it. Yep. Back to these edge creations. Okay. Listening through some of the pre-recorded ones, there are certainly some very good speakers for some canned mm -hmm. presentations. You know, if you were to say to a student, hey, tonight what I want you to do is go through the social studies presentations on edge creations. Why don't you find something on Lewis and Clark that you think is appropriate for us to watch? You know, whatever. So you can do a password. There are some regular ones. Yeah. And there and are some that are as dry as uh, And that's the whole idea of moving them up the hierarchy of learning. Instead of just doing, create your own education, which is, which is your own PowerPoint. And they reproduce, you know, download stuff from Wikipedia and throw that in. Uh, it, it uses a higher level if you say, "Here's find three PowerPoints or three edge creations on on this topic, and compare and contrast the good points and the bad points, and what made them good, what made them bad, and how would you make uh, the best one out of these three? And then they have to know analytically what is a good edge creation, what is good information. Did they back up their information? Did they cite their sources and all those different things that that you want them to learn how to do so that becomes a really nice piece of teaching them how to do that so yeah I, I really this is kind of a nice program to, to do that uh, one of the other things that it's that's easy to do since you guys are using Dropbox is that correct well, some wow. teachers use some teachers not everybody have we done a, we've done a training on Dropbox so Okay. Well, let me just show you something that that's if you already teachers already have a lot of times PowerPoints already developed, and so why create something new if you've already got something developed? 
So if I'm going to go over here to uh, PowerPoint, and um, I'm going to open one that I've already opened recently, Bloom's Digital Taxonomy. So here's a PowerPoint on Bloom's that I stole from somebody, which is what everybody does ideally. So it's got uh, 27 slides. So instead of recreating those or retyping those on educreations, I can say educations will educreations will take JPEGs and bring them in. Howdy, sir. <laughs> so in in PowerPoint, what you do is you say I want to save as pictures. That allows you to save all these slides as a JPEG because it gives you the format right here is JPEG. If I go to my Dropbox and say, this is Bloom's Digital Taxonomy, I've already done it, so here's a folder of everything I've already done. All you have to do is hit Save, and now all those slides are in my Dropbox, okay? As JPEGs. As JPEGs. So now I can go over here to my, to my uh, computer, to my iPad. And I am going to say I'm done with this. I want to create a new lesson. And I want to bring in some of those slides. So I'm going to go up here to my little icon that I have up here. And one of the options is Dropbox. And if you've got Edmodo, maybe you could do it even through Edmodo. I haven't tried to connect those two. So through Dropbox, I can say, OK, here's my Bloom's Digital Taxonomy folder. This has all my JPEGs. Slides is JPEGs. I'm going to put my first slide on slide one. I'm going to go to page two by hitting the bottom right. So now I'm page two. And I'm going to go again and pick up, uh, let's do slide uh, 12. So here's a slide I want to talk about the difference between the old blooms and the new blooms. And I go to new slide here, go to Dropbox, bring in slide 13, and can you just do the whole thing. You can do no, you can't. It's you can one yeah, one at a time in this program. Um, there's a program that that costs a little money that does the same thing, has a few more features uh, that will bring in the whole slide and put them on each different page, but um, that costs I don't know, I think it's four bucks. If you're interested in that, I can show you that later on. But So anyway, you have now these three, and you can keep going on to more slides. But you've got them in there already. You can start your recording, talk about your different things, change them, write them, uh, whatever you want to do with your different PowerPoints, and talk through them. And that recording then is saved for your kids to, to use and keep going so you don't have to create something new if you've already got something created already so that's how you bring in PowerPoints you have to make them JPEGs and then the easy way is through Dropbox but you could um, you could bring them into your camera roll and do some different things like that but that's a little bit trickier to bring them you know, from your computer as JPEGs through your iPad. But again, if you have it, but you could on your computer, if you get off of your computer and do it on your computer. So let's get off of here. So I've got these here. I'm going to go slide to my uh, Chrome. I'm going to create a new lesson. So now I've got this lesson here. I can then um, import from my computers on my computer and do it here. So in my Dropbox, which I could put it anywhere on my desktop or wherever I wanted to put it, I've now got my slides here that I can bring in if I wanted to bring in my slide. And you still have the same one so, at a time. What's that? You still have to do one at a time. And you notice on your computer, this program has fewer features. A few. It's meant to, it, it was built for the, the iPad, and I think they're trying to keep up on the, 
both Mac and Windows side because they have to write it for both platforms when they bring it to a web-based product. So as far as something that's easy to use, though. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. On this, on a computer, this program basically offers you the ability to write and erase and record and upload. It doesn't have the type feature. It doesn't have the background paper feature. It doesn't have nearly what the iPad. Right. For the iPad, I think it would be a reasonable expectation uh, competency in this program on the iPad first year for all, for all teachers. Could be on the list. I mean, that's a decision that we're going to have to sit down and come up with what the competencies are. What are those expectations? Because there's a lot out there, and we've gone through a lot. And the other thing, too, here is when you draw, you don't draw with a stylus in your finger. You have to draw with your mouse. Exactly. Or if you have a bamboo tablet, you could do it that way too, if you wanted to. Yeah, I wouldn't want to use but, a laptop. But you can draw and write and highlight and do different stuff with that. Erase is a little slower too. What's that? Erase is a little slower too. Yeah. Because you have to retrace your mind. Or you can hit the undo. That's true. The undo works better. We do have a lot of teachers that use pressing. But there's no, I don't think there's any narration. No. And but and I'm trying to remember if you can make those JPEGs. I think you can. You can make them JPEGs. So you can use your Prezi. It wouldn't give you the zooming and the features right. like that, but it'd give you the end result of, of what's on your page. Or worst case scenario, you can do screenshots, partial screenshots. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, you do have to watch real carefully if you're doing it with the eraser tool. So that kind of is how you can do it, either from the, uh, bringing in from lessons you have, lessons you create. Um, the only thing we didn't really, really talk about is student creation of lessons, but it's very similar to what a, a staff member would do. You would just say, you know, create this, talk into it, and email it to me, and then they can have that. Uh, the results, you can have three different high levels of questions and see if they can understand, especially in math. It would be so easy in math to, to do that, and or even social studies. Here's the, here's a map of, this, of Gettysburg. We just had the 150th anniversary of Gettysburg. Where was the South? How did <coughs> Lee um, make a mistake the second day? You know, doing whatever it might be, or asking a question, and they can show you on the map, and here's where you went, or where's the trade routes, and kids can draw. Here's your trade routes, and then whatever it might be. So it it can save a lot of, especially for kids that don't like to write or can't write very well. They can speak usually, and put that in there. And so maybe if you've got kids in sped, if you've got a teacher that wants it written out, ask if they can accept it in a verbal process and explain it that way. I would think that it doesn't make any difference whether they can write it or speak it unless it's a writing class, you know, that the information is what you want the kids to know. I would think for this program you would want a stylus too. This would be one reason I would make sure that it's I'd be more comfortable with that than using the computer. I would. But again, like, like um, Dave says, you can walk around with this, and now you're, you're talking and lecturing and doing your different things as you walk around, and then your slides and your discussion are going on as you're walking and talking. And, and then you hit pause when you want to stop a particular discussion or correct a behavior that's maybe not appropriate. <laughs> So, I'm going to stop recording this presentation, and what I want you to do, your assignment, 